This video is going to show how to do generalized correlation analysis with VSIMAP. Let's first review the linear correlation concept from the viewpoint of statistics. Here we have a two-dimensional data set. The data points are roughly lined up along a straight line. The two attributes X and Y are linearly correlated to each other, this means, if we know the value of the X attribute of a data point, say it lies in a interval C, then the Y attribute will be in the interval C prime. The position of C prime can be calculated from the interval C by a linear function. In order to extend linear correlation to more general cases, let's first change the view by collapsing the Y axis to a parallel orientation as X axis. We also remove the data points, but we keep the interval to interval correspondence. This view enables simpler view for nonlinear correlations. For instance, here is a nonlinear correlation displayed in collapsed view. The interval C is mapped to the interval C prime that overlaps with interval B prime, even the source B and C does not overlap each other. This interval to interval relationship is thus nonlinear. Based on the collapsed view, we can then generalize the correlation to higher dimensional spaces. This slide shows an example of correlation between two pairs of attributes. In order to visualize the correlation, we select a series of subsets of data points in the map of one attribute pair, and then watch the corresponding images of these subsets in the second map. If the image subsets form certain pattern or regularity, we say these two pairs of attributes are correlated to each other. In the rest of this video we will call such series of data subsets a trace. A trace is therefore generalization of intervals in one dimensional space. It enables us to visualize correlations between two maps. In practice, we can use different types of trace to explore correlations between maps of data sets. Here are some trace examples. We can for instance, rotate a fixed shape, or scan the data points in certain way. Here is the summary of the generalized correlation. Generalized correlation characterizes the relationship between two maps. It basically extends the linear correlation into the high-dimensional nonlinear space. But unlike the linear correlation, the generalized correlation is visual instead analytical. It does not immediately give us an analytical relationship, but shows the correlation in a series of patterns. Now, let's see how to explore generalized correlation with VSIMAP. Here is a data set that contains the weekly price history of 500 equity stocks. Each dot in the map, or glyph as we call it, stands for a stock. We are going to look for possible correlations of the price development between the first and second half of a year. For this reason, we have normalized the price history diagram at the beginning and in the middle of the year. This map is created with the history data of the first half year. The red glyph in the middle stands for the stock market index, it represents the market average. We notice that the stocks on the lower left region are underperforming stocks, whereas those on the upper right area overperform the stock market. The map for the second half year is quite different. Stocks performed well in the first half may change to underperforming stocks, as we can see here with these two highlighted stocks. Now. In order to see the correlation between the price history of the two half years, we first open the map for the second half year in a separate window, then switch the main map to the first half year. Then, we can start a tracing process and watch the corresponding image trace on the upper right window. The first trace we try here is the rotation trace. Then, we try the radio scanning trace. For these two traces, we cannot see clear patterns in the image trace in the upper right window. Therefore, there is no apparent correlation with respect to these two trace types. Now, let's try the scanning trace with a fixed shape along a path.
with some attention we can see that those overperforming stocks in the first half year are close to the market index. And those underperforming stocks are relatively further distant from the market index. In clearer text, this correlation analysis revealed us that the overperforming stocks in the first half year will likely have less volatility in the second half year. 